But it's really important as you begin thinking about crisis management, when you begin thinking about brand management, and when you begin thinking about trust management. Think about <clears throat> the fact that <laughs> trust and brand and crisis are emotional. They're not rational. When people are scared, there's nothing rational about being scared. So you look at what are the emotions people feel when they're in a crisis. They feel, what do they feel? They feel vulnerable. They feel uncertain. They feel that they can't deal with the complexity of it. They see a certain ambiguity in it. Those, that's, that's, those are feelings. Those, that doesn't happen here. So you know, to understand how to manage a crisis, you need to understand the emotional drivers drive most of the crisis decisions. This is another important part of understanding a crisis, the concept of shared values. I think in, in South Africa, it's become more and more clear to me that this is a direction more companies have to go in managing, you know, the best time to manage a crisis is before the crisis. You know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But, but the concept of shared values is to enhance the competitive of, competitiveness of a company by advancing social and economic conditions in the communities in where you operate. It's all about how people feel about you. If they trust you, you know, I have a concept that I've played around with for years called the Goodwill Bank. Each of you has a Goodwill Bank. Every time you interact with somebody, somebody either makes a deposit in your Goodwill Bank, or they don't. Every time your company has an interaction with a customer, you either make, they either make a deposit in the Goodwill Bank, or they don't. At the end of the day, when it hits the fan, and one day you will have something happen when it will hit the fan, you need to be able to go to your bank account and know that you have substantial equity in terms of the Goodwill Bank. That's what you get from having a culture that focuses on shared value. So the second part of what I wanted to talk about tonight are what are some of the difficult questions leaders need to ask in South Africa? Because the more, the more time I'm here, my colleague Saskia, the more time we're here, the more time we realize you can't be here and not be connected to the social issues, the inequality issues, and all the other issues that, that face South Africa. You just simply, you can't do business here, and you can't come here to do business unless you're connected to a responsible goal of trying to help in that, in that area. So one of the three questions that I think that are really important, one, what's the relationship between brand trust and crisis? What are some uncomfortable truths? And what are five mistakes that CEOs make in what I call the VUCA world of crisis? VUCA is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. We could spend a whole evening just talking about VUCA because it's the world that we live in. So what is the relationship between brand trust and crisis? Everybody I talk to in South Africa my comment, they, they always say, of course, you know, what do you think of South Africa? And, you know, my answer is it's emotionally overwhelming. To me, I'm emotionally overwhelmed. But what I sense is that we are experiencing a time, perhaps unlike any other time, when we live in a time of, of there's, a, there's a crisis of trust. There's a, there's a crisis of confidence. And we're going to talk more about trust in a minute, but the relationship between brand trust and crisis is you cannot have, the government cannot have a, 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 a brand. The company, a company in, companies in general have a brand. Unions have a brand. There's a lot of brands there that are in confrontation with each other because there is no trust. And that's what creates this crisis. So, Let's start in a very basic play. If I asked you, we had time, and I was going to ask you, what is a brand? You know, 50 people, 50 answers. So let's dispel, let, let's debrand some branding myths. Okay? A brand is not a logo. So if someone asks you to, do, to rebrand their company and create a new logo, a brand is not a logo. A brand is not a slogan. It's a slogan. You know, we did, we did Where's the Beef in, back in 1984. And, you know, that, that's not, Where's the Beef was not a brand, it was a slogan. 
It was, it was to describe a, the, the marketplace. Now, how many of you remember, you know, Where's the Beef? Where's the Beef was about, it was a competitive campaign. You know, Burger King, we don't have Wendy's in South Africa, do we? No. So when, Wendy's had a, a very modest name sandwich called the Single. McDonald's has a big name sandwich called the Big Mac. Burger King has a big name sandwich called the Whopper. In reality, Wendy's sing, uh, single had more beef than either McDonald's or Burger King. So the campaign was, where's the beef? What did that signify? That signified that the, our competitive sandwiches had more bun and less beef. So what we did was, we went out and we passed out five million competitive beef detectors in front of Burger King and McDonald's in five cities. Now, anybody know what a competitive beef detector is? <laughs> the only tell reason I tell you the story because it was the third most popular campaign of the 20th century. Was, I should have brought some commercial with me. But um, it would seem dated now, though. Um, anybody know what a competitive beef detector is? Sorry? Well, you're, 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 you're close. A competitive beef detector is a magnifying glass. So we passed out five million magnifying glasses in front of Burger King and McDonald's so the customers could find the beef. Okay. Then, and the, the way the commercial went was these three elderly lady went up to a counter of a competitor and this little lady, Clara, goes, where's the beef? And, and then, you know, that became, it became so popular, it became part of the, the vernacular in the country. And we, 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 we baked um, 800 uh, hamburger buns that were about a half a meter each. And we stuck the commercial inside, sent it out to about 800 media. And then we, the, the advertising buy for that campaign was $7 million. The advertising campaign started February 7th. By January 30th, we had $32 million worth of free coverage on, on TV. That's, that's how many times this, the commercial had gotten run before the campaign even started. And it just, you know, it was just what everybody w was talking about. The whole point was, where's the beef was a slogan. It's, and, and it wasn't a brand. A brand is not an identity. A brand is not a product. So if it's not a product and it's not an identity and it's not a slogan and it's not a logo, what is a brand? A brand is the trust communities put in you and their brand experience. You have a brand. Your brand is the trust people in your world, your communities, the trust they put in you.